hello, brothers, uh, associates, and colleagues. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, my name is Ben Horgan. I'm the formation director of the XPSS, and I'll be uh, serving as our MC for our prayer service today. I'd like to invite uh, our general superior brother, Dan Scala, uh, to uh, lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning and proficiat to all <clears throat> on the feast of St. Francis Xavier. I'm especially happy to see that um, we have so many joining us for our prayer service this morning from Kenya, from uh, Rouge, and um, th throughout the United States. Um, today we uh, celebrate and we also offer our gratitude for the spiritual legacy um, from St. Francis Xavier and Theodore Reichen. Um, as we know, Francis Xavier was one of the seven founders of the Society of Jesus and a great missionary. Um, and from our own fundamental principles, we read that Theodore James Reichen chose St. Francis Xavier as the patron of the congregation so that the name of this insatiable laborer for souls will indicate with one word what is intended for the congregation. So today, you know, we live Riken's vision as a community of missionaries. We don't have to travel to some far off distant land to be a missionary. I think when we attend to the needs of our community, to the brother, uh, <clears throat> to our neighbors, and to our families, whenever we're present to one another, um, and no matter what our circumstances are, where we find ourselves, we are missionaries when we can see and receive God in um, the, our current circumstances. So we're all missionaries in the truest sense of the word. And so this morning we pray not just in our own name, but in the name of all of us uh, and all who are associated with the Severian mission. And we wanna remember in a very special way today, Brother Peter Fitzpatrick, uh, and Brother Matthew Burke, who have died over the past week. Brother Peter was buried already, and this morning, Brother Matthew Burke's funeral mass is being celebrated, um, and he will be buried at St. Xavier's in Louisville. Uh, and so... And let us remember also our sick, all those who are affected by COVID uh, at Riken House and beyond. And uh, remember Brother David Mahoney, who's recuperating from recent surgery, and Brother Jim Eckert, who had bypass surgery and is back at Mass General. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, you have sent us as missionaries to proclaim the gospel to all nations and have promised to always remain with us. Look upon this family of Theodore Riken gathered on the feast day of St. Francis Xavier. Pour out the abundance of your spirit upon each of our brothers and sisters especially on those who are called to ponder upon the journey made and to plan what has still to be done so that we may offer an authentic service to mission. Grant that we may be ever faithful to the gospel and our vocation. And give, help us to seek solutions to the hopes which the world places upon and before our church today. 
Stay with us, Lord, when we gather around the table of your bread and your word. And when we walk the paths of the world side by side with our brothers and sisters. Grant that we all find ourselves in heaven, our homeland, after having been members of the Severian family on earth. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite Brother Augustine Odia Nyambi to proclaim our first reading from the Fundamental Principles. It looks like brother is not with us today, so I will step in in his place. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. These words of the gospel stand at the heart of the vision of your founder. Within them is contained the mission and the ministry of your congregation. Beyond this, Theodore James Reichen chose St. Francis Xavier as the patron of the congregation so that the name of this insatiable labor for souls will be will indicate with one word what is intended for the congregation. Your founder's vision was unique. He intended to form a community of laymen who as religious brothers would be sent as missionaries to the world. As vowed members of the people of God, sealed in baptism and confirmed by the Holy Spirit, they would participate in the church's mission of evangelization through a life of gospel service lived in solidarity and availability among people. We would like uh, Associate uh, Richard Frost to please proclaim our gospel reading from the gospel according to Mark. Mr. Frost, I believe your microphone is muted. I apologize. I'll start again. Jesus appeared to the 11 and said to them, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs, the gospel of the Lord. We now invite brother uh, Arthur Kalaman to uh, unmute himself and offer a reflection on today's readings. Thank you, Ben. Good reminder. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, every year on this day, the date offers us really a, a, a triad, so to speak, of themes and images for our reflection. First of all, St. Francis Xavier on his feast day, obviously. 
but also Riken and the first Severian community as our sponsored schools in the US conclude Founders Week, but also the opening days of the Advent season, the context in which these other dates always fall. And I'd like to start there. We're quite accustomed to thinking of Advent as a time of preparation. And this year's liturgical readings from the B cycle in particular warn us to quote unquote, be prepared. A few days ago, however, as I began to read our Advent Reflection booklet, I was struck by uh, a quote from Meister Eckhart that Dan used in his uh, introductory letter to that booklet. Quote, be prepared at all times for the gifts of God and be ready always for new ones. Now that, that second phrase, be ready, brought to my mind the words of our fundamental principles, which challenge us to quote unquote, stand ready to respond to our calls to mission. And as I reflected further, it seems to me that there may be a, a subtle but key difference between being ready and being prepared. A difference that was obvious in the lives of both Riken and Francis Xavier. We don't know how much Riken actually knew of the life of Francis Xavier, but we do know one image of Xavier that would have been familiar to him. This statue, which is high above on the facade of St. Walburga's church in Bruges, uh, just by way of uh, background for some of the others besides the brothers in Bruges who are on this call, uh, despite its current name at St. Walburga's, this church was one of the first dedicated to St. Francis Xavier. It was dedicated in 1643, just 20 years after Xavier had been canonized. However, when the Jesuits were suppressed in 1773, they withdrew from this parish in Bruges and elsewhere, and the parish was renamed. But this statue remained, perhaps quite simply because it was too high above street level to be removed safely. If you, see, if you saw this, uh, the, the full picture of this, this is about three stories above street level on the front facade of this church. At any rate, Riken, in, in his time, would walk past this church often in the early years of the Zavarian Foundation in Bruges, because at his time, the Jesuits had recently reestablished themselves in a community house just behind this church. And that was where Riken would come often to visit Isidore van de Kirchhoff, the Jesuit priest who was his supporter, advisor, spiritual guide. So no doubt on some of those occasions, he would gaze up at this statue and strengthen his resolve to name his new community after this insatiable laborer of souls, as our fundamental principles say. But it's also interesting to note historically that Riken's resolve to name the congregation after Xavier was actually well tested in those early years, since his first companions for about the first seven or eight years tried to persuade him to choose a less ambitious name for the group, such as the Congregation of the Infant Jesus or the Brothers of St. Joseph. But these kinds of names were too domestic for Riken, who knew what he intended for his fledgling venture despite his, his, its tentative beginnings. But in so many ways, Riken's vision exceeded his realities, the difference between being prepared and being ready. His young community of about 13 at the Wallajet seemed ill-prepared for any great missionary ventures in America or anywhere else. They lacked any real professional or practical training they had very limited formation and experience in the religious life. They were barely able to keep up with the ministerial commitments they had begun in their very poor parish in what was then the very poor city of Bruges, and none of them could speak a word of English. But none of this lack of preparation prevented Riken from standing ready to respond to what he saw as an even more urgent need to share the good news of God's care and compassionate love in England and then in America. And whether he realized it or not at the time, Riken's own readiness, despite lack of preparation, was not so different 
from the missionary call of Francis Xavier himself. Because contrary to much of the hagiography and the pious stories about this great missioner, there's nothing to suggest that he was particularly well prepared for his 10 missionary years. In fact, his missionary call was quite sudden and actually accidental. In 1540, the Young Society of Jesus had just recently become established in Rome, where Xavier was happily at work helping Ignatius organize their new life and mission there. However, when the time came for the departure of two of the first Jesuit priests for India, which is a promise Ignatius had made to both the King of Portugal and the Pope, one of the two fell ill and could not travel. So Ignatius turned to Francis with the uh, not so encouraging message that, quote, there is no one else to send. So in addition to being surprised, Xavier himself was not too well prepared. What we know from history is that Francis had been a poor teacher at the University of Paris. In fact, one of the backstories was Ignatius had secretly paid students at the University of Paris to take Xavier's courses so that Xavier would not have to leave Paris and leave the first group of what became the Je Jesuits. He also seemed to lack any particular linguistic aptitude, a burden he carried throughout his 10 missionary years when he was forced to rely on ineffective translators of local languages, often with some interesting and unexpected results. And as far as we know, he had never boarded a ship, although he would spend three full years of his 10 missionary years on the sea, traveling from Portugal to India, and then on to Indonesia and Japan, and finally the island of Sancian off the coast of China. But most of all, he was busy and effective in Rome and very happy to be at the side of Ignatius, who was his mentor and friend, as they worked together to establish the Young Society of Jesus. Yet despite all this, Xavier too was ready, ready to take that first step beyond his comfort zone and into the unknown because he knew the need was great, even if it meant leaving behind everything and everybody he knew. So as we reflect on their lives, what was it that made both Xavier and Riken so ready, even if not well prepared? And I think, I believe that the answer is that they each had a deep experience of God's love for them, an awareness that God loved them just as they were in all their sinful and graced humanity, with all their weaknesses, foibles, follies, and even sinfulness. Despite all of that, God loved each one of them without limit, without condition. And that experience convinced them that God would be with them no matter what or where. A conviction that even if that first step turned out to be a serious fall, they would fall into the arms of a loving God, of a loving Father. And this year, each one of us is challenged and invited to be ready in the midst of a pandemic for which none of us were at all prepared, ready to respond to the needs of others who need some sense of God's love for them at this time. Most of us are not called to be dramatic healthcare heroes or others who risk their own life and health to be of service. However, each of us is called to be ready to respond in unexpected ways, whether that challenge is to reach across the globe, probably not likely for most of us, or just to reach across the street or across the desk or across the table. Whatever our challenge, we can indeed stand ready if we allow ourselves to experience God's love for each of us through the common ordinary unspectacular flow of our everyday lives during these days of Advent. Amen.
Thank you, yeah. Brother Art, for your words. We will now uh, have a meditative hymn for us to, uh, to contemplate in silence. I ask that you please uh, mute yourself uh, so that we all can enjoy this time of prayer together. to invite, uh, this is Rana Tully, uh, the CFO for the Zverian Brothers, to please uh, unmute herself and lead us in our intercessions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians around the world, especially our Zverian Brothers and associates, that we may proclaim the good news of the risen Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our benefactors and partners in mission, for the innumerable ways they enhance our shared mission through their generosity and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those suffering from the coronavirus, may they find comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord our prayer. hear our prayer. For all who are mourning the loss of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, yeah. I'd like to invite back Brother uh, Dan Scala, General Superior, to lead us in our closing prayer. Before um, we pray the closing prayer, I just want to take this opportunity to make any announcements. Um, we want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, from Africa, from Bruges, from the States, um, and uh, special thanks to Brother Art for uh, giving us a lot to think about in his reflection uh, this morning on the lives of Riken and Francis Xavier and how we ourselves uh, can be prepared and stand ready during uh, these difficult days of the pandemic. Uh, I want to thank our uh, readers, um, Rhonda Tully, of course, and uh, Richard Frost and Ben, who stepped in. 
Um, and we hope that you'll be using the Advent Reflection Book that um, we provided to everyone to, um, with your prayer through the season of Advent. And so we pray, Lord God, by the preaching of St. Francis Xavier, you brought many nations to yourself. Give his zeal for the faith to all who believe in you, that your church and our congregation may rejoice in continued growth throughout the world. May this prayer fill us with the same love that inspired Francis Xavier and Theodore Riken to work for the salvation of all. Help us to live our Christian calling in the Severian tradition and to inherit the promise of eternal life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. St. Francis Xavier, pray, pray for us. Theodore Riken, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.